Um, today, my topic is how to differentiate fatigue from demotivation or unmotivation in translation studies. Um, the research background is not Recently, we see scholars' interest in translators' emotion and motivation gets increased in number. Uh, but how to measure those uh, states become a problem. In terms of uh, emotional factors, recently and currently, we use subjective and objective measurements to calculate those factors. But just as Roger and Coro cautioned, when we dis distinguish strength from other emotions, uh, when heart rate variability and skin conductance as uh, indicators, there is no evidence shows that uh, discrete categories of emotions are uniquely corresponded to specific regions of brain. And the same rule applies to other biomarkers. So as a common confounder in translation experiments, how can we measure fatigue accurately and uh, tell it from other emotional or physical states? That's my research question. First of all, I will make a brief review of uh, theories on fatigue. According to Maris Webster Dictionary, fatigue is uh, a state of uh, awareness or exhaustion from labor, exertion, or strength. It consists of physical and mental parts, and uh, it can be treated as a state or as a trait. Recent uh, uh, current uh, theories uh, on fatigue focus on its uh, mental aspects. As uh, books uh, and uh, tops uh, proposed, fatigue, mental fatigue can be summarized as a physical biological states caused by lengthening and uninterrupted periods of attention demanding tasks and features a feeling of energy depletion. It can impair our attention maintenance, self-regulation, response proteins and accuracy, as well as efficiency of information identification and utilization. Latest theory focus more on the its impact on efficient energy management. As uh, Thomas and the uh, warehouse uh, states, the fatigue is the inability to do the right thing rather than continue to work over the sustained term. So, so as uh, Batley and the uh, chats agreed, they think uh, the conflict between competing be behavioral disposition is the essence of fatigue. So in summary, fatigue is an adaptive state to maintain effective and systematic management of goals and signify one's motivational control. If you have noticed, in terms of theory, fatigue shares some overlap parts with the motivation. And the current models on the appearance of fatigue can be divided into macro models as well as um, macro models. For the first type of models, uh, Gaddis believe that uh, contextual elements, internal physical factors and uh, tax features can all together contribute to fatigue, which can be alleviated by off-task or leisure activities. In terms of macro models, the most renowned are Cannell's model on attention allocation. He proposed that individuals' overall arousal during a task depends on attentional resources available, and its distribution is a combined effect of one's long-term task interest, state motivation, and the regular evaluation on the goal performance discrepancy. 
Hawkinson furthered his model by including competency-related factors such as response to challenges, capacity for sustained work, tolerance of strengths, and the perception of test value. On the other hand, uh, Kenner and uh, Ocker, Kenner and uh, Ackerman, inter. Um, come up with the integrated resources allocation model. They believe the quality of attention a sensible for allocation is a joint fi function of one's ability and willingness, in other words, motivation. So based on those theories, scholars has um, proposed uh, several measurements for fatigue. They can be grouped into subjective toes and objective toes. Um, as a fatigue, theoretically speaking, can be divided into short term and long term, as well as trade and stake fatigue. Many scales have been developed to measure those uh, types of uh, fatigue. And uh, the typical practice is uh, compare participants states in pre-task and post-task states after a lengthened task. When it comes to objective measurements, some scholars propose that performance can be used as an indicator of a subject's fatigue state, but cautious should be taken. Performance can also be influenced by task-specific competence task difficulties, term on task and the task interest. Moreover, the effects of fatigue on task performance can be unnoticeable based on previous literature. And it is explained by Hockey in his compensatory control model because they think uh, human beings have uh, ability to self-regulate and uh, control their cognitive native ability despite of fatigue. In this sense, psychological markers uh, detected by the ECG, EMG, EOG, EEG, and eye checkers seems more applicable in terms of measure fatigue. So here is a review of uh, previous studies measuring fatigue in cognitive and physical tasks. Um, I think based on the feature of translation activities, uh, we can use some of those indicators to facilitate our studies. First, in terms of uh, physical fatigue, we can use the thin and high resolution sensors or EMG electrodes. We can place them on the skin surface where translators exercise continuous forces like a tenor, thinner. And we can also use cameras and uh, EOGs to record changes in translators' for facial expressions. For example, face legging is believed to be a signal of fatigue. And we can also use eye movement indicators such as increased eye blink frequency and the duration, decreased eyelid muscle activities. In terms of cognitive fatigue, EEG cap is a decent toast because the stat statistics shows that an increase in theta and alpha frequency band and a decrease in beta frequency band can indicate one's fatigue. FMGR and the eye trackers can also play their role in this area. But when using those indicators, we must uh, um, take cautious of those uh, confounding factors. The typical example is that when we use uh, pupil, pupil size, both emotional and the physical states can cause a change in pupil size. On the other hand, Cause the fatigue that is defined as a state uh, due to attention demanding after a lengthened task. So the task on task is a crucial factor. 
previous study using computer-based work have showed that uh, typical, normally it takes uh, three to 40 minutes for a employee to show his fatigue after computer-based uh, work. As uh, nowadays, uh, translation are mostly conducted in the computer scenarios. Uh, so maybe translation fatigue can appear after a similar period. The next section is about the definition of motivation and its measurements, because uh, theoretically and uh, practically speaking, uh, motivation, demotivation and fatigue can be hard to distinguish. First of all, it's quite similar that motivation is also defined as a trade and a state. Um, the most uh, used uh, self-determination theory proposed that the satisfaction of one's competence, relatedness, autonomy, and external rewards or regulations can lead to one's motivation. Uh, on the contrary, if uh, those uh, factors are not uh, gratified, uh, we can either become demotivated. In translation studies based on this theory, some scholars have developed skills such as interpreter trainers learning motivation skill. And uh, when treated as a state, um, biologically speaking, uh, motivation is regulated by biological structure of the basal glossia and uh, its intensity can shift even within one single task. So in the previous experiment, uh, researchers uh, normally combine both the self-report data and the biometric data to detect participants' uh, motivational state. And uh, their theoretical framework is uh, motivational intensity theory, which believe that task efforts can used as an indicator of task motivation and can be measured by sympathetic system response in stylistic blood pressure and the pre-ejection period. Previous cognitive and uh, physical experiments have mostly used those two indexes, but in case sometimes one indicator may be insensitive to certain stimuli. So those less perfect uh, measurements are also employed, like uh, diastolic blood pressure, heart rate, pupil size, and uh, skin conductance. More recently, one scholar and his colleagues have used EEG to to document uh, participants' uh, motivational states because uh, neuroscience shows that change of the band power in the prefrontal cortex uh, proved to be modulated by emotion and motivation. So here is the uh, table shows that uh, currently scales and uh, biomarkers used uh, to measure subject some um, motivation states. But we must uh, caution that when we employ scales, especially from other disciplines, the necessary modification and the validation is very important. For example, when I try to use uh, work preference inventory, which is a renowned uh, motivation skill in work and education areas. Uh, I try to situationalize those items rather than use the, its uh, generic expression because it makes more sense. And uh, when we use those uh, biomarkers, uh, as I stated before, we must uh, strictly control those confounding factors so in the end, I want to make some suggestions on how to differentiate fatigue and uh, motivation. Theoretically speaking, fatigue 
is a uh, exhausting state due to long term work. So time on task is uh, very important for us to tell fatigue from motivation or demotivation. While lack of motivation can happen at any stage of uh, task exhaustion, it may happen at the very beginning because one are uh, unwilling to one is unwilling to take the task. It may also occur that at in the middle of the task because one um, become more and more understood of the task difficulty or gradually get bored of this task. So fatigue must occur after a long period while motivation, um, the occurrence of the motivation is uh, cannot be de defined by the term of the task. Um, in in terms of uh, practical methods, muscle fatigue has some physical features which is undetectable in motivation. Because biologically speaking, human beings are unlikely to control their muscles in a conscious way, especially in cognitive task-like translation, where skeletal muscles does not play a notable role. So in this way, EMG and EOG are effective tools for us to tell fatigue from demotivation. When it comes to mental aspects, first by signals of uh, drowsiness, is a sign of fatigue, like increased activities in alpha band power are peculiar to fatigue. Because motivation is more self-controlled and operates consciously most of the time. Meanwhile, neuroscience scholars have mapped out some brain regions corresponding to motivation and fatigue respectively. I think it's very, useful for us to apply EEG to distinguish fatigue from demotivation that might occur at the same stage. In terms of other physical indexes like heart rate and blood pressure, demotivation is um, manifested by the in sorry is manifested by the decreased arousal in Sympathetic activities, which shows, which displays a uh, lower SBP and a longer PEP. While on the contrary, fatigue is uh, indicated by increased uh, sympathetic arousal and a decreased uh, parasympathetic new nervous activities. So, in this sense, uh, the biomarker data can be reversed for those. Two states. Actually, Govray and his colleagues has implo have employed a series of neural automatic psychochemical and behavioral signals to dis disassociate effects on working memory experiments of uh, mental fatigue and uh, motivation. And uh, though preliminary of their findings is quite promising. It shows that uh, using those biomarkers, we can also tell fatigue from demotivation. That's the end of my presentation. And uh, thanks for your attention. Questions and comments? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. Any comments or questions? Oh, okay, Michael. Yeah, thank you. So I'm, um, I was wondering, you we're talking about many ways how to measure uh, psychologically fatigue, right? And I was wondering, what do you think is the impact on the translation product? So the, the, do you think it has um, 
it, it will produce a different kind of uh, translations. Um, so do you have any idea maybe whether uh, fatigue also will change, uh, I don't know, precision of a translation or, or wording or, or something like this? And do you think it can be measured or related to fatigue in a clear way? Um, thanks for your question. Actually, um, I also work as a part-time translator. So because um, most of translation tasks uh, my clients send to me are uh, tight, urgent tasks. Sometimes uh, um, I have uh, read, I have uh, um, work a long time uh, during daytime and uh, after a return home, I still need to work on those uh, tasks. I can easily feel tired, but not uh, to the extreme state of fatigue. I personally feel those uh, tiredness can influence my translation because uh, um, I will reduce, maybe reduce uh, the consultation process if I'm really tired. And uh, sometimes um, it's uh, uncontrollable. My translation quality will drop if I am work in a fatigue state. So based on my personal experience, I think uh, fatigue can seriously influence the translation process and uh, products. But uh, um, currently there is no experiment or studies that investigate on this topic. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So just as a follow up to that question, uh, have you considered uh, measuring the added distance uh, compared to the fatigue, for example? I'm thinking that if I'm using machine translation, I might be very uh, generous in time with the first segments, but as I get tired, I might change less from the machine translation. Uh, sorry, I um, maybe due to the poor quality of <laughs> Wi Fi, I didn't catch the last part of your question. Okay, so you're a translator, you're using machine translation. You're going to edit, change more at the beginning and less at the end. And the other distance will show that as you get tired. Um, but uh, <clears throat> actually, normally I do not use the ZAT tools um, very frequently. Um, most of the time I will use those uh, machine translation like uh, Google Translate or um, Yudao Translate, which is uh, more common in China. And uh, I think maybe the task I received are of a small scale. So, uh, it uh, does not make uh, much difference uh, if I use the ZAT tools or not. But uh, I think uh, definitely machine translation or ZAT tools uh, uh, reduce the tiredness uh, caused by translation work for me. And the uh, many functions uh, in those tools are very helpful and uh, reduce quite a lot uh, cognitive efforts. Any other questions, comments? Um, just curious, so what, how do you want to integrate this uh, aspect of the research into translation process? What's your research question? Just my curiosity. I mean, uh, um, Actually, I'm still trying to figure out my research question, but uh, generally speaking, my research is about motivation and translation because based on literature on language to writing and uh, other areas like uh, work and management areas, and they believe uh, motivation type can influence uh, employees' work performance. Uh, there are intrinsic and uh, extrinsic motivation. Theori theoretically speaking, 
Mm, intrinsic motivation is believed to be good. They can facilitate uh, creativity or um, can help an employee maintain a positive attitude in spite of obstacles. While extrinsic motivation may not be such beneficial, but uh, in working areas, as people are get accustomed to those external rewards. Some scholars argue that extrinsic motivation may not be so harmful. Um, so I want to investigate how different types of motivation might influence a translator in terms of their working attitudes and uh, their translation performance. Okay, thank you. Okay, one more. We still have take like, yeah. Hi, thank you for your presentation. It was great. Oh, sorry. Uh, I I was thinking about also um, the influence of, on productivity. I'm a translator myself, and I think that for me, fatigue and demotivation have an impact, different impact in my productivity. It's like when I'm fatigued, I still keep going. And when I'm demotivated, it's like I take different breaks. So maybe it's uh, interesting to, ju it's just a comment, to, to see it uh, from that way as well, perhaps. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments? I think this is very really interesting uh, research, but the, uh, yeah, the thing is how to measure it, right? So uh, if, if it's possible to measure the fatigue using the eye tracker, then it's easier to implement that into our research, but uh, still looks like it's still a lot of work to do. But anyway, thank you uh, for your presentation.